Hello guys and welcome back to Ginge Under the Sea for another Shark Talk. Thank you so much for joining me today. Hope you're all doing really well. Today we are going to be talking about the oldest shark species and possibly the oldest living vertebrate in the world, the Greenland shark. So let's dive straight in. So where is the Greenland shark found? Now it is found in the cold, deep waters of the North Atlantic, anywhere from the coast of Canada all the way across to the coasts of Norway and Scandinavia. It is not actually known how far south these animals go because in the summer they do stay very deep to stay in the cold water. However, there have been reports of a Greenland shark as far south as the coast of Portugal. So these sharks are some of the largest sharks in the world. They can grow up to six 0.4 meters long which is just a little bit smaller than the gray white shark however the majority of greenland sharks found are between two and a half and five meters long this makes them some of the largest predatory sharks in the world however they are very different to other predatory sharks such as the gray white shark and tiger sharks which are some of our biggest so the, one of the ways they vary from the gray white shark and the tiger shark is they live life in the slow lane they really move at a leisurely pace it is thought the greener sharks on average swim at about a speed of two and a half kilometers an hour which is actually half the speed of a normal walking person so that is seriously slow and then they grow at a whole nother level of slow evidence from a tagged shark that was tagged in the 1930s and then found again in the 1950s these greenland sharks only grow about half a centimeter to a centimeter every year so this is extremely slow you can imagine that these six and a half meter sharks must be incredibly old to have got to that size. Let's go to that world famous topic of their lifespan. Now a study in 2016, which used radiocarbon dating to age 28 different specimens of shark, they found that their largest specimen was estimated to be around 392 years old, give or take around 120 years. So this means it could be over 500 years old. That would mean that this shark was born way before this guy even was born, William Shakespeare in the 1500s but was alive up until only a few years ago in 2016 which is just incredible to think that animals could live over that many centuries and as i mentioned it is thought that the greenland shark may well be the longest living of all vertebrates in the world and interestingly the scientists that did the study also predict that the greenland shark only reaches sexual maturity at around 150 years old so that means the greenland sharks are teenagers basically until they are 150 years old. Now that's an awful long time to be a teenager. Apart from these studies, very little is actually known about the Greenland shark due to the cold, deep waters they live in. But it is thought that their diet is made up of mainly fish and then any other animals that they can scavenge. Interestingly, some Greenland sharks have been found with animals such as polar bear, reindeer, and even moose in their stomach. So it is obvious that they do scavenge a lot from animals that maybe die and fall into the water. However, one shark was found with a whole moose in its stomach, which does possibly raise the question, was this a predation? Now, definitely could have been a scavenging event. However, there is a theory that due to moose regularly swimming across bays to get from one area to another, this shark may well have ambushed, give it in a very slow motion ambush for sure at two kilometers an hour, but could have ambushed this moose and dragged it under and then actually predated on a live moose. And also it is thought that they possibly predate on sleeping seals as well. Obviously their ambush can't be fast, so they have to use other techniques like sneaking up on sleeping animals. So another really interesting, unique fact about the Greenland shark is that the, almost all specimens that have ever been found by humans, they have had a parasitic copepod that lives on their eye socket. You'll see that in videos, you'll see the small copepod that is drifting along with them. Now this is likely to make the shark completely blind. However, this doesn't seem to affect their hunting ability due to the fact that they live in these very deep, very dark waters. So the fact is that their other senses are so heightened, they can actually still hunt and eat and scavenge very well without any eyesight at all. They have incredibly good sense of smell and they are actually very good at smelling rotting flesh. And so they will find any scavenging opportunity in the area. A really interesting theory that hasn't yet been proved is that the copepods may well have a symbiotic relationship with the Greenland shark as they release a bit of bioluminescence. So this could actually cause certain prey items to actually approach the shark in the deep 
due to that bioluminescence giving the shark an easy meal. So the, the actual numbers of Greenland sharks is not known due to, again to their location. However, they are still fished on a small scale for their meat in certain cultures such as Iceland and Norway to provide food for the locals. Now the most well-known dish for Greenland meat is called hakal in Iceland. I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. So this dish is where the Greenland shark meat is actually fermented in the ground for a number of months and then dried out in the air for many months more, making it edible as before it has gone through this fermentation process, it is actually toxic to humans due to the huge amounts of urea or urine that is stored in the mussels. Now, even after this long process, it is thought that hakal is a very acquired taste due to its very, very strong ammonia and strong fishy smell. So apart from this small scale fishing, the main threat to Greenland sharks is actually in bycatch, as there are many commercial fishing vessels in the area that are fishing in very, very deep waters and do have very high bycatch levels. So we need to make sure that we are helping protect these sharks as well as other species by ensuring that the fish and seafood that we put on our plate is responsibly sourced, that it is not sourced using damaging and dangerous techniques such as longlining or bottom trawling. And we're sure that we are eating species that are in healthy stocks and aren't in a massive decline. So that is it for the summary of the Greenland Shark. I hope you guys really enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did get some value out of this talk, then please give it a like below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to continue learning about sharks and about the marine environment. If you'd like to support my talks, then please check out my T-Mill store where you can see some of these clothing items. They're all ocean and shark based designed by myself and these items are environmentally friendly and renewably sourced so by buying these products you will not only be supporting me but you'll also be supporting circular and sustainable fashion so once again guys i really hope you enjoyed today's talk don't forget to join me on the next one so click the subscribe button now and i'll see you next time bye guys